specific prayer topic tonight. Thank you all for obliging me and uh, taking on a prayer topic. Um, this is for the general meeting. This one down here is like for Men's Foundation. Oh, what's the name? I got. I got. Oh, okay. I'm a guy. Look now. <laughs> All right. I will. Um. Oh, okay. So the agenda. Welcome. Opening prayer. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray some more. And we're gonna keep on praying. Okay. Um. There will be time for open prayer. So we do have assigned topics. But anytime anybody feels led, you know, just go ahead and jump in and um, pray. And we are also going to have time for prayer requests. So tonight our theme is God is love. I was like, oh, it's February. It's love month. I like hearts. God is love. God loves us and we love him. So all of our topics are going to be on something with God's love. So I'll open us up in prayer. Dear God, I thank you for this time for us to be able to gather here today, Lord. We just saw each other a few days ago, Lord. Thank you for bringing us into the presence of one another again, Lord. We're thankful for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, Lord. We're thankful for your love. We're thankful for the love of one another. God, thank you for sending your son to, to die for our sins, Lord. Lord, you told us to love one another. You told us to love our neighbors, Lord. You even told us to love our enemies, Lord. If we're having trouble with that, I pray that we'll just be able to at least love each other in here tonight and just be able to expand our love and show a dying world what the love of Christ looks like. Lord, please bless this time that we share in here tonight. These things I pray in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Theme, God is love. So our first Prayer topic is for God so loved the world, and Elder Bobby's gonna pray that for us. Y'all, we don't have any games tonight. I'm probably just gonna do some random commentary, you know, in between the prayers. So I went over to Elder Bobby on Sunday after church, and I said, "Hey, Elder Bobby, I need somebody to pray for God so loved the world." That's a pretty heavy topic. Can you can you handle that? And he said, "Yeah, God's my strength. I got it." So I was like, "Okay, thank you." So. For God to love the world, Elder Bobby. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, so yes, a very well-known verse for believers, um, probably and even unbelievers. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read John 3:16. I'm probably gonna read a couple more verses with it, just to give it a little more context. But for God so loved the world. That he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that, that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So we thank God that in this way he loved, not as much as why, but that he did love us and that he did provide a way for us not to perish and to be condemned. Uh, that he came as Jesus to bring light and expose darkness and forgive us of our sins. So that's something that we have much to be thankful for. And that's something that we want to share with everybody we meet. Um, so as we go in prayer tonight, let's be thankful for what God has done and the opportunity that we have um, for his light to shine in darkness. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for uh, this single ministry uh, coming out and hosting our church wire prayer rally uh, this February, God. Um, and we're thankful most of all, God, for you and your love, God, and how you loved us in a way, God, that uh, we did not deserve God. Thank you, uh, and, and because of that love, God, we now have hope 
We now have salvation. We now have, as in your word says, we have everlasting life, Praise eternal life. Without that, God, in your word it says, we are condemned, that we perish. So, God, we're thankful that the light has come. Jesus has come to expose darkness. And when that darkness is exposed, God, we just pray that we trust, that we believe in what the Son has done. So, God, we pray for those that may not know you, God, even those that may be on this call. God, if they do not know you, if they not believe in you and your Son, that you have paid the price for our sins to redeem us back to you, then, God, we pray that their hearts should be changed, God. And they would see the love. They would see the sacrifice. They would see all you have done, God, so that we would not perish, but that we would have eternal life, that we would have salvation, God. So, God, help us, all of us, God, that are here now, that have trusted in the Son, that believe in the gospel, that believe in the good news. God, may we believe that this world is dark enough that that light needs to continue to shine everywhere we go. So, God, help us to be bold, God, yes. when we speak with others, God, whether we're in our homes, whether we're in the communities, God, whether we're at work, whether we're at the shopping center, whatever we're doing, God, help us, God, to be bold and ready, listening to your spirit to share the salvation we have in God. So, God, I pray that you receive this prayer, that you would get all the glory and honor. And that we would be able to share his salvation with others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Next up, we have love one another. So, uh, Sister Kitana is going to come on and uh, pray in a moment. Kitana is my best friend, y'all. Um, anytime I tell her that uh, we have something going on at the church, whether it's a women's tea or, you know, even a prayer rally, she said, Gabe, I want to be there. I want to, I want to pray that night. So um, he goes through random things um, at her church. And I'm like, why are you going through that kind of stuff at your church? I don't know. My church is, we, I don't know. I don't hear about those kind of things in my church. But um, I know the love one another topic is something that is really relevant to her life right now. So I was like, oh, I need somebody to pray love one another. You got it, girl. And she said, yes. So, Key, if you want to uh, come on, if you want to, you know, give some kind of context or anything before you pray, please feel free to do so. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes. Um, so, when Gabe told me that you guys are doing a prayer, I, I just want to be a part of this. And I was conversation with her about the things that were going on in my just about me. And Gabe was like, why do you think that? And I was like, what? God is just trying to teach me how to love. He's just love is. And she was like, oh, guess what you think you're afraid about? And I was like, oh, thank you, God. Because he always shows me. He always tries to teach me through other people. But love. this is a very much so dear topic for me in real life. Because Love is not this pushy things that people portray to be. Love is really something that I think the people of God have took life. And when I read this scripture, um, I read it again just so I could you know, get it deeper into my spirit. A new commandment I give to love one another just as I have you are also to love one another that you are my disciple love one another um a couple weeks ago i wrote in my notes love is not a feeling because i remember telling god i feel like i go through it i don't feel like i have this and god was like love is idiot so when i read the conscription like no yes you're breaking up how's your signal um tell me if you hear me do you hear me better now uh yeah you're clear go go ahead okay is it better on this side of the house 
Yes. Okay, great. All right. So the Holy Spirit was speaking to me like love is a commandment. And love is not a feeling, it's obedience. So it says it's a commandment, it's a thought, it's not a thought, it's an action. It's something you do without thinking. Love is what you do, you do despite of. He fills us up with love so that we can extend that love to others and to others. This when the scripture, when I read the scripture, it says, by this all people will know that you are my, my disciples. It hit me kind of hard because all people mean all people. That means people that don't even walk with God should see us love each other and know that we belong to God because God is love. And it kind of challenged me to understand that when God puts me in situations where I'm the one that challenges the love to count it all joy because I have to be the one that God uses to show love to others to each other. And allow the Holy Spirit to convince me or the other person to show love. So I wanted to, to I was very honored when you asked me to pray this topic because this is what God has been dealing with me about in my own personal life is to love them because love covers a multitude of sins to love each other because love endures. And God wanted me to understand the power of love and then of course love. So with that being said, I will go before the Lord and I will pray a prayer for us. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Father God, for us, forgive us for all our sins. Lord, we just thank you right now for everything you have done for us and we thank you for your love that you have shown for our lives, Father God. Father, we pray that we take out each day and thank you for loving us. And if we have not thanked you today for showing us love, Father God, we take out this time today for doing so, Father. We pray, Father God, for the Holy Spirit conviction to love one to love each other, Father God, earnestly, Father God. We pray, Father God, that we go to you, Father God, and ask you, how can I love this person? How can I love that person? How can we do these things, Father God? <laughs> In a way that's pleasing to you. Not to show love the way that we want to show love, but to show love in the manner that you would have us to show love, Father. We pray, Father God, that we walk in obedience to this calling on our lives. We pray, Father God, that your commandment to love each other, that we would not take that lightly. We pray, Father God, that we take it as a badge of honor to show the world what love looks like to our daily lives, to our relationships. To one, one another, Father God. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> that on that on the path of love, but that we live, we live in love, and that we let love lead us in our paths and our lives. Yes, that we let love lead us in a way that it covers multitudes of sin. We let love lead us that we are unconsciously showing love to others that is not even a thought. That is something that we do, like when we get up and we brush our teeth, it's something that we do automatically every day is to show love. So, Father God, to ask you for a greater anointing of love upon our life, Father God, to be able to give that love to others. We ask, Father God, that you for a fresh anointing upon us this day, Father God. We ask you for the grace to extend this love to other people, those that, that will come across our paths daily, those that we talk to on social media or through telephones or those that we even see in the store, Father God, we pray that we are able to extend our love through a hug, through a message, through a smile, through a gesture, Father God. We pray that we have ears to hear you and hearts to obey your calling in our lives, Father God, to show love and to walk in love. And we declare and decree things to be said and done. And we receive your love in a greater manner this day, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 That, that was good, girl. Thank you, Bessie. Thank you. Thank you. Praise them. Praise them. <laughs> okay, so next up, we got a uh, Eakin and Training Tim Jones. Eakin and Tim just kind of like got, got caught in the like cross hairs of mm -hmm. this when I was looking for uh, folks to pray. Last week, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's all right. Yeah, and he um, he did graciously agree to pray for love your enemies. So thank you, Eakin. Thank you. Okay. Uh, love your enemy. When she gave me love your enemies, uh, seemed like it was a hard one because 
just the fact of uh, your enemy. Okay, and I, I look, you know, I try to look up a uh, definition for enemy and, and uh, you know, according to the dictionary, enemy is someone who's antagonistic to one another. Some, something that's harm, someone is harmful or lethal or hostile unit of force. Enemies do not have to be people who want to kill us. They may be difficult neighbors who wish to harm your reputation or someone who makes fun of your beliefs or a competitive business with ruthless tactics to drive out other businesses. It is nature to avoid these, those who wish to use harm. But if you want to be like Jesus, we will pray for them. So uh, I had a few verses that uh, I, got, I got down because uh, Bibles has a lot of verses about love your enemies because, uh, you know, we live in a sinful world where, you know, <laughs> you, you can't turn around without somebody wanting to uh, hurt you or, or uh, defame you because of your belief in Jesus. Yeah. So uh, I got Genesis 50 verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. And Luke 23, 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 6, verses 27 to 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. So uh, I got a few more, but uh, I'll be one. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Romans 12, 14, and 17 through 19. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful what be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If, it's, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. Believe, believe room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. So even though we have enemies, it's, it's not up to us to uh, repay them or uh, take our hatred out on them because they threw hatred at us. You know, that's, the, the God is gonna take care of that yeah. somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. And everybody's gonna have to give an account and everybody's gonna have to answer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, even though they're, they're uh, they had hard hearts, you know, it's not your job to change their heart or soften their heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's God's job, so. Uh, <laughs> that being said, we will go to prayer. <laughs> Lord, I pray for my enemies today. I ask that you would turn them to you, rescue them from darkness, and lead them to salvation. Open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus. Help them to be ruled by peace and not conflict. Give them a new heart and put a new spirit in them. Take out their stony, stubborn heart. Give them a tender, responsive heart. Please give them a spirit of wisdom and insight and open their eyes and hearts. Guide them to truth and help them to hear your voice and not harden their hearts to it. Give them the desire and the power to do what's right and to instruct them, instruct them in the way that they should go. Help them to stop being unkind to people and help and keep them from harming others. Heal their wounds because hurting people hurt people. Let your will be done in their lives. Meet their needs and help them to forgive. Show them the way out of their temptation and deliver them. Please let any correction they receive or even tax from Satan turn them back to you. 
Lastly, Lord, please forgive them. They might not even know how they are hurting people. So I ask you these things, Lord, in uh, your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Just Jay. And Just Jay, um, I tried to give him another prayer topic, but he saw this week, so he said he wanted to pray for this week. So you on, Jay? Just Jay. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, cool. All right, so I was tasked, and it's my pleasure to actually pray this uh, scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses 4 through 7. But one thing I want us to do is really reflect on what this passage is really talking about. Um, when we look at this passage, it's not just talking about the love that we show to one another as believers, but the love that we show to one another that others are observing that being of unbelievers. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. And love endures all things. And when we look at this, love is an action. Love is about action. Love is how a person lives for Christ and how we obey Christ. But it's not just that alone. It's how we live for others and we serve them as well. So take just a moment to think <laughs> about the patience that God has shown you. Take a moment to reflect on how many times we're not patient with others, how we're not kind to others, but how God has been kind to us, how we want our own way, but how God showed us the true way. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, and King of the universe, who commands us to engross ourselves in his word and who sanctifies us by his word and commands us to engross ourselves in your word. We thank you for the love that you have continually showed us from the beginning of time. We thank you for the patience that you've displayed to us when we don't even reflect being patient with others and being patient with you you still are patient with us. Thank you. We thank you for the kindness that you continually bestow on us. Thank you. We thank you that you do not just look to your own, but you desire for all to come to you. And we know that all things are about you and you alone. Yes. We know that you are not arrogant, but you are a jealous God. And you desire all of us to be holy as you are holy. Your arms are open wide, displaying what that love looks like as you hung on the cross. You patiently endured the sins that we committed against you. You patiently endured on the cross as we nailed your hands, as we nailed your feet, as we put a crown of thorns around your head, you patiently endured to display that love for us. We know that we anger you 
when we sin and do not follow you, but you always give us a way back to you. You showed us the way by what you displayed on the cross daily in our lives by your unmerited favor, by your grace, Thank by you. your love. Yes, you do not rejoice in sin, but you, enjoy, you rejoice in obedience and truth and love. Help us to follow that example that you left for us as you walk this earth in our place, living the life that we were supposed to live and dying the death that we were condemned to die. Help us to be able to bear all things. Let us bear with one another in love so that others will be drawn to you. Let us believe and live in your truth because you are our hope. You are our all things that we need. And in the midst of displaying that love, we know that you made the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So that will help us to endure all things that we come against. As we come against persecution, you will help us to endure and we will still display your love as long as you are with us. We thank you, we praise you for all the love, all the joy, all the patience, all the kindness, all the goodness, all the righteousness, all the holiness, everything that you are, that you continually reveal yourself to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jess J. Mm -hmm. You said what? It seemed like he took letters too long. It was just J and kissed with J. That is how you spell it. I talked to him about this. Okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so next up we got Minister Matt. He's going to pray, love the Lord with all your heart and love thy neighbor. Matt is always down for whatever. I, I love Matt. I just come up with random things or I text some random stuff and he's always here for it. So thank you, Matt. You're all right, so I, I actually love this passage of scripture concerning the uh, what I consider to be the foundation of our faith, when we talk about the greatest commandment. We look here at Matthew uh, 37 through 40, and we're, look, we're getting insight into a conversation that Jesus is having with the Pharisees as they're trying to be slick by trying to trip him up. But he ain't going to fall for it because he knows their hearts. So we look at verse 37, it says, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So I call it the foundation because we see this passage resonate from Genesis all the way through Revelation. We see God in his response to Adam and Eve display his love and his response when they go against him. We see it as Moses is presenting the law. He's sharing this very commandment, which Jesus is referring to here. We see it in Jesus' response as he's willing to lay his life down on the cross for us, for our sin. So when we talk about love, we're talking about love not just in terms of romantic aspect of our desire for someone. We, we're talking about love and action, love and reverence, love and acknowledgement of the severity of God, the love that we have for the omnipotence of God, the love that we have for a God who foresaw 
the, from the beginning of the world, the need to therefore restore a redemption plan for his creation. So we therefore have this opportunity to resonate, not just our love for God, but also have that resonate, uh, that love that we have for him resonate to our neighbor. And who is our neighbor? Everyone around us, the people who we come in contact with. So when we are fulfilling the first commandment, it should therefore resonate in how we therefore take uh, 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 a place in terms of putting into action the second uh, commandment, which is to love our neighbor. So as we uh, pray, I pray that we look at the manner of how our actions resonate with the love that we have for God. Recognizing that we, we serve a God who is more than capable of placing into action what his love is and therefore have, is more than capable of defining himself, defining his characteristics as we're living in a culture that tries to strip his characteristics away from him. So help us, as, help us Lord, as we uh, convey that love, inspecting our own hearts when it concerns ourselves and how we uh, display that love for you. And help us, Lord, as we look at how we convey that love for other people. So let us pray. We're thankful, O oh Lord, that you are such a loving God. Yes. Even at a time in which you know, we did not know you, which we did not convey that same love for you when we were uh, in our sin, when we were in our sinful state, seeking only the th desires of our own flesh and the sinful desires, you saw fit, O oh Lord, to continue to display your love for us when we wouldn't show our love back to you. We thank you Bob. Yes. We're thankful, O oh Lord, that you're a God who puts into action what love is. Yes. Yes. You are the definition of love. Yes. And therefore, in all the things that you do, you help model for us what it thank looks you. like when it comes to forgiving those who sin against you, you forgiving God. those who do not show love for you, showing what it looks like to therefore put into place into action care, concern for those who do not necessarily may want us to reflect that same care and concern back to you. Help us, O oh Lord, so that we can be uh, 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 more loving in yeah. terms of our actions and attitudes and the way we uh, 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 do the things that we do out in the world, how we conduct our affairs with our family members, with our friends, with our loved ones, even for those who do not love us. Help us, oh Lord, so that we will not become so tribal where we only want to be uh, loving toward those who love to, God, back to God, us God, first. God, help us, oh Lord, so that we won't become blind mm -hmm. to our people who may not engage with us in a manner in which we want to be engaged with. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we therefore we strip our love mm -hmm. from those who may need to see and understand what the love of God yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. and how it can apply in their own lives of us being sacrificial with the manner of how we are willing to distribute our love to other people. We love you, O oh Lord. Yes. We're thankful, O oh Lord, for all that you do. We're thankful, O oh Lord, that you are a God of love. Yes. So help us, O oh Lord, do a better job of communicating that with other people. Yes, Lord. We praise you and we thank you. Yes. Yes. In the name of yes. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Next up, we have open prayer. If you want to pray, you can pray. So we'll just wait a few seconds to give people the opportunity to jump in here and pray. Remember the theme is God is love. Um, I'll jump in there, right? This is Kyle. Hey, Kyle! Hey. Um, yeah, let's go to God. Um, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the chance to, to know you, to lean on you, to hear your voice for ourselves, to not have to um, go through any mediary or um, any process just to hear from you and speak to you, but we can go directly to your word, 
regardless of what we have done in our lives, what we have done wrong, and where we fail. Lord, we know that your love is ultimate. It's greater than the love that we can experience with anyone, not from a mother or a father, not a best friend, not a spouse, not anyone, Lord. We know that you love us true. Your love is, is pure. Your love is real. So, Lord, we ask that you please just continue to help us to learn how to love like you love. Help us to recognize that it's not by anything that we have done to deserve it, but it's because of how how gracious and merciful you are that we are able to, to experience love from you, Lord. So, Lord, help us to, to realize and recognize the amount of love that we should be sharing with those around us. Lord, help us to recognize that people are not our enemy, that that when we have um, faults and when we have wrongs, Lord, we can we can continue to seek after your guidance on how to handle situations and seek after um, how you would have us to operate, how you would have us to function, how you would have us to speak, and how you would have us to deal with one another, Lord. Help us to continue to seek after you in every interaction, in every moment, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our wrongdoings. But Lord, help remind us that every time we do wrong, it just shows us how much we need to, to draw back to you. How much more you have to teach us, how much more you have to show us, and how much more we can grow, grow in if we um, desire to seek after your faith, after your will. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we trust you. And we know that you are doing a work and building the testimony in the lives of your people. So we thank you for it. Hard times, difficulty, challenges. We trust you and we put our lives in your hands and we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Kyle. Thank you, Chaplain Kyle. <laughs> Anybody else? It's open prayer time. I'll give y'all a few more seconds and we'll move on. Father, I want to pray for this world mm. that has turned from your love, God. Mm -hmm. Your word even tells us that the love of many went wax cold, God. Mm -hmm. We live in a culture that has redefined love as, as being a total acceptance, but we just heard that your love does not delight in wrongdoing, mm -hmm. but stands on truth. So, God, we just pray for this world and this culture, and I pray for the church, uh, the church at large, our local church, that we would exhibit the love uh, that you called us to, uh, that we would show to a, a dying world what true love is, yeah. that we love in truth, we love uh, unconditionally, we, we love because you first loved us, and yeah. we, we, we pray, Lord, that for just repentance mm -hmm. of our nation, of our world, mm -hmm to turn back to you who are, you are both holy and you are love. And so God, we just truly, truly pray mm -hmm. that you would help us to be those witnesses uh, in our communities, in our families, yeah. in our homes, in our neighborhoods to exhibit the type of love. Lord, forgive us, even the church, we have not shown that love mm -hmm. and so that the world sees any difference. God, forgive us as Christians who argue behind the keyboard online, not exhibiting the type of love, even on social media. Lord, forgive us even in person, we do not show the love uh, that you called us to, God. Uh, we pray that we as a church would be countercultural to all the, the animosity and evil and hate that we see around us. Help us to be a city set on a hill, a light. Help us not to hide our light under a bushel. Mm -hmm. May it be seen by others and give glory to your name. Mm -hmm. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Next up, we have. Go. Not going. Next up, we have um, Sister Tracy. She is going to pray. God loves a cheerful giver. And when I thought about this topic, I was like, I need somebody who I know just be in the word, like all the time in the word. I love Sister Tracy. She's so 
bold and I can, she loves the Lord and she loves reading, reading his word. And I was, I just knew she was the right person for, for this prayer topic. I love you, Tracy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, I got another scripture here. Uh, Mark 12, 41 through 41 is the widow's offering. And it reads, and he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For well, they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put everything she had, all she had to live on. One of my um, also <clears throat> my favorite Christmas movies is Elf. Mm -hmm. If I had it my way, I would watch it many times over the 12 day <laughs> countdown to Christmas. A main character, Will Fair, plays the character Buddy, an elf large as an adult, but with the mind of a child. There is a scene in a movie where Buddy is introduced to Miles Finch, who was a talented and much needed resource for Buddy's dad's company. Well, Buddy gets in an altercation with Miles and he calls him an angry elf. <laughs> not knowing that Miles is not an elf, but was born slightly verbally challenged. After all, elves are supposed to be happy and full of excitement, especially at Christmas time. But this cheery behavior is not the representation that Buddy is seeing given, given Mal's short statue. As Christians, we are called to be cheerful givers, full of joy whether we are given our time, talents, or treasures. Yet oftentimes we are not cheerful givers of either, mm. especially our time. Mm. There are moments where we have the proclivity to act selfish with our time, not designed to serve in ministry, or when we do it, it's done with a lack of cheer. There can be a plethora of reasons behind this, Maybe we'll serve in an area that we are just not passionate about, or one that doesn't align with our talents or spiritual gifts. Or perhaps we are simply burned out from serving, or could we just be doing something to say we are doing something? Second Corinthians, um, Paul punctuates, he admonishes us with these words when he says that the point is this, whether Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. And as is written, he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. So the question is, are we sure forgivers? What are we offering God? Givers of our time, talents, and treasures? One that serves our gracious God with a heart overflowing with authentic and genuine love in his perfect eyes? Or do others perceive us to be like mouths? Not an angry, but chillless Christians. <laughs> May we labor to have God and others see us as cheer forgivers because our hearts are filled with much joy yeah. to you. Yeah. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to pray this evening. We ask you to forgive us, Father. You are love. You are love, but yet sometimes we're unloving. Lord, we ask you to forgive us when our hearts are cold and stony, even in what's supposed to be a worship and ministry and service to you, but it's no cheer there, oh Lord God. We ask you to forgive us, oh Lord God, when our hands are closed and we don't even want to open them to give. Some of the gifts, some of the resources that you gave us to be stewards over, oh Lord God, when it don't even belong to us. We ask you, Father God, to forgive us of the times where we don't give our time. When we choose to sit that last of days of call, not wanting to give in service unto you, when you gave us the greatest service, when Jesus went to the cross and died for us, for he showed the ultimate price of love. Lord God, we ask you, Father God, to open up our hearts and let us be cheerful givers, not just of our financial resources, but our time, oh Lord God, of our talents. Lord God, you want us to be 
cheer for servants of you, O oh Lord God, in whatever ministry that you've called us to do. Lord God, allow us to say yes, O oh Father God, with a willing heart. Lord God, but let us not have a yes that is grudging, oh Lord God, a yes that is like, okay, I think so, but Lord God, part of filled with joy, a joyous yeah. yes, oh Lord yeah. God, to serve yeah. you with all our heart, with all our soul, yeah. with all our mind, and with all our strength. Lord God, let us give, be sure to give us of those that lack, oh Lord God. Lord God, because what you've given us don't belong to us. It all belongs right. to you. Yeah. Lord God, we are just managers of the resources. So, Lord God, calls our hearts to be pricked, to be chill forgivers. Chill forgivers of everything you've given us, so, Lord God. Chill forgivers of yeah. our resources. Yeah. Chill forgivers of our time. Chill forgivers of the spiritual gifts that you've given yeah. us, so, Lord God. Let us be bold witnesses, oh, Lord God, to you wherever we may be. Lord God, let us love one another like you called us to love, oh Lord. Agape love, oh Lord God. That unconditional love that you show us. Let our hearts be cleansed of unrighteousness, oh Lord God, that keeps us from love and compels us to not love, oh Lord God. Remove the stones, oh Father God. And like Brother Tim said, give us a heart of flesh, oh Father God. Change our hearts, change our minds so we can be Chill forgivers, oh yes, Lord God, yes. in each and everything that we do. Let our work, oh Lord God, not bear us down so much that we're overwhelmed, Lord God. But let us know, oh Father God, that we will not, we will reap a good harvest if we just continue to work hard, oh Lord God, and not grow weary in the work that you called us to do. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to even serve, to come openly and to serve you, oh Lord God, when there are others who have to do it in secret. We have the opportunity to do it freely, oh Father God, so let us be true forgivers of all that you've given us to manage, to be good stewards so Oh, Lord God, because nothing belongs to us. It right, truly right. all belongs to you. Let us, us see, let us see that, oh, Lord God, yeah. that you are love, oh, Lord God, in every aspect of our life. And that we're able to exhibit those true attributes of love by being patient and kind mm -hmm. and not jealous and not pouring things over people's head, oh, Lord God. Let us display grace. In everything that we do, oh Lord God, grace, oh Lord God, but fully covered with the love that you've given us by the work that was done on the cross. So let us be true for you. Just like the widow who didn't have much, but she gave all that she had, oh Lord God. Let us not hoard. Let us not hoard, but be willingly give with open hands, so open palms, so that we can too receive the grace that you've given us, the mercy that you give us each and every day that's renewed. And so, Lord God, we submit this prayer. One that you openly receive with your arms wide open so that we can be better cheerful Christians. And it is in Jesus' yeah. wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all y'all praying and uh, preaching tonight. <laughs> Next up we have uh, Sister Rashida. I'm sorry, Minister Rashida. She's going to pray Jesus Loves Little Children. And I asked her to pray this because she just seemed to have a heart, you know, for the youth. So I thought she would be the best person to pray this prayer. You ready, Minister Rashida? Yes, ma'am. Hey, family. Um, so I am going to, can you hear me all right? Yes. Very good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, read the scripture that we have before us tonight as well as share um, one other. Um, so I'll start with Psalms 127, 3 through 4. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. And our focus scripture here, uh, Mark 10, 13 through 16 reads, and they were bringing children to him that he might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me, do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. 
And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Family, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we just want to thank you, God, uh, just for the opportunity, Lord God, to come before you on tonight. God, as we've heard uh, several others before me, Lord, you are love, God. So we are just so thankful, Lord God, to be recipients of your love, God. We thank you for what your son Jesus did on the cross, Lord God. That was the ultimate reflection of love, Father God. It was a selfless act, Lord God, that we each have had the opportunity to benefit from. God, in your word, you tell us that children are a reward, Father God. They are blessings, Lord God, that you have given us, Father. Let us honor our children as such, God. Father, I pray that you forgive us where we've fallen down on the job, Lord God, as parents, as community uh, members, as church members, God. Father, Lord, as your word says, Lord God, they brought the children so that you can touch them. So, God, we come to you tonight, God, asking that you touch Every child, Lord God, that's influenced by someone that's online, someone that's in this room, God, people that are in our neighborhoods, God, we pray that you touch each of these babies, Lord. Lord God, it is a trying time in this day. Lord God, our children are under attack like never before. So God, we pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, demonstrate your love. Teach us, Father, how to love our babies properly, oh God. Lord God, in Deuteronomy 6, you said that, Lord God, when we get up and when we lie down, Lord God, that we are to share with them about the love that you have given us, God. Help us, Lord God, make much of those teachable moments, Father. Lord, help us to make much of them. Father God, I pray that you protect our babies, Lord God, mind, body, and soul. Father, we have children that are struggling, Lord God, with their identity. Father God, you created us as male and female, Father God, but we got babies, Lord God, struggling with who they are, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you protect them, Lord God. Remind them of who you created them to be, and it wasn't by a mistake, for they are masterpieces, Lord God, that you knew before they were even knitted together in their mother's womb. Father God, I pray, Lord God, for those that are battling, Lord God, with negative thoughts, Lord God. Lord God, those that are contemplating suicide. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you open their eyes to who you have called them to be, oh God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you remove the grip of death that wants to be assigned to their life, Father God. Free them, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you give them a thirst for you, oh God. I pray that you give them a thirst for life, Lord God, Lord God, and that they know, Lord God, that you have come to give them life and give it more abundantly. Father, I pray for their bodies, Lord God. We got babies going through sickness right now, God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you heal. You set free and deliver, God. Lord God, you got babies with body images. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that when they see themselves, they see you, that they are a reflection of you. God, I pray for their purity in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that they thirst after purity and righteousness, Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray that you bind the hand of the enemy, Lord God, that pursues them. So great. Lord God, I pray that you give our babies the peace that surpasses all understanding. Give them the wisdom, oh God, that they need, Lord God, to be clothed with the armor that you have so greatly given. Lord God, some are torn, Lord God, between what the world is asking and what you're asking of their hearts, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that we do a better job, Lord God, at teaching our babies, Father God, not being legalistic. But God, that we teach them, Lord God, that you love them and you created them just as they are, God. Help us, Lord God, to help the, the children that may be difficult, that are battling in school, Lord God. Help us to speak life into them. Yeah. Father God, and we pray, Lord God, at the end of the day, Lord God, that their souls will be saved, Lord God. And as Brother Tim mentioned earlier, that you will turn their eyes from darkness to light, Father God. Lord God, you are a God that does not change, Father. Lord God, I pray that you help the parent, Lord God, that's struggling with the wayward child. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that the word and the seed that's been placed on the inside of them, Holy Spirit, that it will not return void, Father. That is what your word says. So God, I pray that you free them 
Lord God, that you draw the children back from the east, from the west, Lord God, and that you bring them back to the place that they are to be. Lord, these are your babies, and we submit them unto you. So God, as your word says, we ask that you touch them on tonight. And we ask this in all things in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Rashida. Next up, uh, y'all, we got to get moving along. We're about to run over is um, Brother Minister Tony. He's going to uh, pray, husbands, love your wives. This is a subject that is very dear to me. As I have observed what the enemy of our soul is doing to marriages, it's through marriage that the triune God is displayed. The attack came early upon marriage in the garden, and the attacks are still coming. I've always desired to be married from a young teenager. I desired to be married even though I saw And that the man who I call dad was last day I carried the voice the family when I was just 11. But nevertheless, I saw good in the relationship that was displayed before me between he and my mother. Maybe that is why I desired to be married so much. I always knew that I would be a good husband. But then I discovered after being married that I was not truly equipped that being good alone is not good enough to sustain a marriage, to be able to fight against and war against our flesh and those who will come against us as husbands and as wives. But having come to know God for myself, having matured as a husband, this matter of marriages, no like matter. It's an institution that has been ordained by God. It is the front line. It is where we do battle. It is where men lead their homes. It is where men are the guides of their home and where men shepherd their wives and shepherd their children, where they are the priests and kings of their home and where the man is absent from the home, where the love of a father is not felt within the home. Our babies are attacked. The identity, identity of our children are lost with regards to sexual identity and all that comes with it when godly men are not standing in their rightful place and displaying the love that God has called us to display within the home and to our wives. Hear these words spoken to us in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. He died for his wife. He died for the bride. He died for you and me. Husbands, we are to die for our wives. We are to care for our wives. Christ here, that he may sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes it, nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ, Christ does the church because we are members of his body. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you 
for the institution of marriage. Yes. Yes. You gave to Adam and Eve that they may subdue their domain and populate the earth. And that establishment and that marriage came under attack early, O oh God, even as Satan is attacking, attacking the families today. O oh God, we must be able to stand as godly men. We must understand the ungodly love, the sacrificial love, as seen displayed in our Lord and Savior. A love that is not built on errors. One flesh, and desires, and passion, but a love, oh God, that is established with a godly love. And that love that we see displayed in Jesus Christ. He loved us because we belong to him, and so we are to love our wives, not because of what she offers, not because she is our wife, but we are to love her because she is a gift. She is a gift from you, O oh God, a gift that we are to cherish, a gift, O oh God, who we are to pour into her in the scriptures. We as men, we are to be the leaders of our home, the priests of our home, the shepherd of our homes, the protectors of our homes, the providers of our homes. O oh God, we are falling short in this area as men, and we ask that you forgive us, O oh God. Oh, God, raise us up. Strengthen us up. Help us to see our spouses, and not just our spouses, not just our wives, but one another as your children who you love. And even as you have loved us, oh, God, help us to love one another. Help us to cherish one another. Help us, oh, God, to lay down our life for one another. But greater love is this than a man lay down his life for a friend. Yes. And that a man lay down his life even for an enemy, but for a man to lay down his life for his bride, it is an honorable thing. But God, help us in this endeavor that we may know the love of Christ as Christ has loved the church, that we as husbands may rise up and stand up in love and display love to our wives, that our children may see what it looks like to love as a man. To look, see what it looks like to love as a husband. And our loving our wives, our wives will fall in line willingly and lovingly that our children may see the love of God as we as fathers love our wives and our wives in turn we love us. For oh God, help us in this area. Strengthen us in this area. Help us to see our need to rise up in this area. <clears throat> the world is looking at marriages. Marriages are falling apart, falling apart, and marriages are being attacked. We who are Christian, we must stand strong. We must depend upon one another. We must call upon one another. We must ask one another, how did you make it through? Be willing to share with their brother and sister that is struggling the grace of God that got us thus far. So, Father, we thank you. Be with us and strengthen us and keep us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Y'all, we have one more prayer topic. Sister Tammy is going to pray nothing can separate us for the love of God. Whenever you're ready, Sister Tammy. Okay. All right. Um, just, uh, I don't want to keep anyone, but um, I just, in reading this verse, I just never knew that it was wrapped into service and how it, it pushes us to serve. And so thank you for inviting me to um, be a part of this because it opened my eyes to a whole, a whole host of things and um, just researching the scripture and thinking about it just it, it pushes us to, to serve and and this truth in the scripture is true because of God's character and not because of us of who we are so um, um, the one other scripture that I was going to wrap it into I was going to start at Romans 35 but it wraps into Romans 28 so I'll, that'll be in my prayers so I'll just read starting at Romans 8 um, 35 through 39, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we have been killed all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him yes. for i'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ Jesus, our lord <clears throat> so as i'm in prayer i just ask that that all of you just think of anything that wasn't in that verse in this list if you if you could think of anything else just have that in your in the front of your brain as i'm praying just to think of it if you can have anything that you can think of that could separate us from the love of god or anything that you feel like could get you there so let's go in prayer god our father maker of heaven and earth giver of life sustainer of life you are yes. in all things derived from you yes. so you are in control of all things it is yes. you that, it's in you that we live and move and have our being your yes. mighty and majestic and worthy of our honor and praise and glory yes. it's to, to you we pray for there's no other god i know to pray to no one else yes. i can depend on so i come to you in this hour yeah. This truth should be like a warm, cozy blanket to us. Those of us who trust in you, Jesus Christ, who have confidence in you, God, and who have responded faithfully to your gospel. Those who have encountered you and attest to your goodness and presence. For they, and you and me, we were foreknown, predestined, called, justified, and we will be glorified. This yeah. truth should anchor us. So God, let it sink deeply into our hearts. This yes. world is filled with uncertainties and we don't know what the future holds. But if we don't know anything else, if there is nothing we can be certain of, it is this truth that there is nothing that can separate us from your love, God. These things, death, distress, persecution, danger, anything else any one of you could think of, be sure that all these things, including the things you're thinking, God will use it to serve his plan to accomplish his will, and it will not separate us from his love. For we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Yeah. For those who are called according to his purpose. God will cause all these things, the distress, the persecution, the danger, anything you thought of to work together for good. And that good is to conform us to the image of Christ, to praise him as we should and to share in his glory. Our sufferings, afflictions and pains and pleasures and triumphs. God, is, God help us to believe that you will cause all these things to become our good, to perfect us and complete us. Help us to trust in the Holy Spirit to strengthen and empower us and guide us so that we receive this truth and can fulfill the just requirement of the law, which is to love yeah. each other. To yeah. fulfill one of the greatest commandments, which is to love our neighbors as ourselves. This love that cannot be separated from us, that was the work on the cross. It was meant to cause us to love each other, even our enemies. There is nothing anywhere any size that can come between this covenant love relationship we have with you god you will overcome it you are omnipotent and so is your love some of us have been abandoned neglected abused by fathers mothers spouses children family and friends and you might be insecure or angels are not trusting so it might be difficult to believe this truth but God, you're not a man, and you cannot lie, and you cannot change. If you said it, it will be so. If you spoke it, it will be fulfilled. Nothing can be, nothing can revoke it. So God, help us to embrace this permanent covenant love relationship. Chris, step out on faith, be bold and confident to have no fear, and to put our hands on the plow and not look back and serve others in love. 
Give us the resolve to reach out to a world who de desperately needs this love you gave us. It was not meant to be set on, hidden, or safe for later or wait for you to come back. It was meant to be used to build up the body of Christ. Help us not to grow weary in doing so. Give us your power, the power that seals us and guarantees our inheritance. Help us to believe we are more than conquerors and to rest in the finished work of Christ and the unchangeable character of you, O oh God, and to anchor our souls in the truth that nothing can separate us from your love. Absolutely nothing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tammy. Y'all, um, I do apologize for the time we ran over. And um, we're going to have to forego the prayer requests, but if you can put them in the chat or if anyone present here right now, if you want to write them down, please go ahead and do so. But uh, Pastor Harris is going to close us out in prayer. Thank you for, you know, for everyone, like I said, that did um, pray here tonight that I asked. So Pastor Harris, Harris is going to close us out in prayer with a special prayer for the singles. Yes, for singles, all right. Um, I like this uh, verse, First Corinthians chapter 7, <clears throat> uh, and this comes from the NLT. Um, verse 7 says, it's Paul writing, but I wish everyone were single just as I am. Mm -hmm. And each person has a special gift uh -huh. from God of one kind or another. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to pray as we close out for our singles and our singles ministry uh, mm -hmm. that they have the gift of singleness and uh, they would use it wisely. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we do thank you. We thank you for the gift that you have given unto us, the gift of singleness. Some have the gift of marriage. And so we pray in particular tonight for all of our singles. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for them. We are thankful for those who may have never been married. We pray for those who are divorced. Mm -hmm. We pray for those who are widowed. Mm -hmm. God, we Thank you for their contributions and their membership in the body of Christ. Yes. And we pray that they would use the gift of singleness uh, to maximum efficiency, yes. God. That yes. you would yes. bless them. Yes. Because even Paul writes, he desired that people would remain single as he was so that they could be devoted, Ooh. not distracted or by the cares of having to care for mm -hmm. a spouse. Uh, Lord, we pray, Lord, that they would use their time of singleness, undistracted, undivided devotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bless each yes, single, God, Lord, yes. that you would give them strength, yes. the power of your Holy Spirit yes. to serve you with their yes. gifts, serve you with their talents, serve you with their resources. Yes. Lord, that you would bless them in that, God. And for those that may desire at one point to be married, yes, Lord, we yes. pray that in your time, yes. in your season, that yes. you would bless them with the spouse that yeah, you would desire. Yeah, 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 yeah. God. And for those who may not desire God, we thank the Lord yeah. that they would live their life devoted unto you. Yeah. But surround every single, yes. whether they want to be married or not, with good quality relationships yeah, Lord, yeah. within the church, in their families, Lord, friends that would be deep and rich friendships yes. mm -hmm. that would help keep them and guide them and direct them, God. Mm -hmm. So, God, we pray for the singles ministry you, in particular. Pray for Tim and Gabby, Lord, that you would bless them as they guide this ministry. Uh -huh. Bless those that would come around them and strengthen yes. them as they look to yes. uh, be a blessing to help guide and direct in this ministry would encourage every yes. single that's a part of this church and even those that are outside of this church yes. Yes. that you would bless them to expand yes. their reach yes. and influence yes. to show a dying world what does it mean to be single and be a Christian God yes. so bless them in that God yes. and God more importantly we're thankful for the Lord Jesus who is the perfect example mm -hmm. of a single person. Mm -hmm. He came to this world as a single man, lived a life devoted unto you, my prayed God, to God. you, walked this wor world without sin, God, and Thank fully you. devoted unto you, God. So, God, I pray that you fill every single with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Empower them to walk, Lord, even the way of their master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 
God, we thank you for this time. Yeah. We thank you for being able to pray to you yeah, yeah. because of who you are. Yeah. God, we thank you that you are the God of the universe mm -hmm. and we have direct access to you because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And so God, for every request, every need, mm -hmm. every situation, yes, God, you already know it. We submit it unto you, God. Yeah. Have your way, God. Yeah. Keep us, even those who are here as we leave and go back to our respective homes. Yes. May they be blessed. Watch over us, God. Bless all who are tuning in virtually, God. And I'll bless those who may even watch this later. Yeah. They receive yeah. a special yeah. blessing of hearing your people cry out to you in prayer. Yeah. And God, we love you. Yes. We thank you. Yeah. As the name of the Father, yeah. in the name of the Son, and yeah. the name of the precious Holy Spirit, we pray. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all for coming out tonight. That is all. <laughs>